is um, a way to indicate image sizes with the image um, type. And for all these things, I also tend to have a question, well, how would I represent this in uh, Pandoc's markdown? And if I can't think of a nice markdown-y way that's elegant and you know, would degrade well and so on to represent it, then I'm, I tend to be less likely to add it. Uh, so and I, I try not to mess with it too much, but it, it does need to grow, definitely. Other questions? Yes. Uh, do the writers generally enforce like, um, or validate like, how the output format? Um, well, so if I'm producing yeah. like XML. So or, or you want to know if, if the Pandoc HTML writer will ever output invalid HTML, for example. Correct, yeah. And, and I think the answer is no. Um, I would think it would be a bug if it did. Um, it, it could be doing something more serious that it's not doing. So like, I mean, I think um, Objective Camel has some libraries where, you know, they have things like our Blaze Builder uh, where you cannot construct an invalid document. It's just a type error. And uh, including what can be contained in what and so on. And we're, we're not using anything uh, like that. But I think the way the writer is set up, it won't, in fact, produce any invalid HTML. HTML. Actually, I think Pandoc is kind of a nice way to learn LaTeX. If you want to learn some LaTeX, you know, Markdown or HTML, just type it out, convert to LaTeX, and then, you know, you can see how to do the things that you generally need to do. <coughs> then you can move up to using the full power of LaTeX, which, which does allow you a lot more control over things than, than Pandoc, but at the cost of not having um, multiple output formats. I should mention one nice thing that Pandoc can do too is you can define LaTeX macros and use them and they'll work uh, even in formats other than HTML. Um, so I had an example of that in, um, actually I think in this uh, first sample. So here's a macro definition. It's a LaTeX macro definition. And you can have inline LaTeX in Pandoc's markdown. So this is an example of it. It defines a command a tuple, which gives you a, a tuple in uh, angle brackets. OK, so now I use it, tuple xy. And even if I'm producing, uh, say, um, well, let's just produce HTML. Uh, even if I'm producing HTML, here you see it, uh, it'll give me those ang angle brackets. It'll expand the macro. Maybe it's clear if I do two plane. Uh, that didn't work, did it? Uh, let's do two. Uh, doc a word document. So here's the, see, you can't read that at all. How do you make this bigger? I don't know, anyway. You never have to use it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I try not to use it. It worked. <laughs> Just take my word for it. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. I mean, because once you get used to using LaTeX macros, you kind of hate to have to give that up in writing other kinds of documents. So we don't restrict the LaTeX macro? Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? All right. Well, thank you. I'll be around uh, this afternoon, so feel free to pester me if you have any more. And, um, no, so DocX is an open format, um, technically, um, with awful documentation. And, uh, so a lot of it was like, so, so what it is is it's a zip container with XML. So.
And uh, so you can create a Word document, and then you can open up the zip container and look at the XML and figure out how to do it. And I did a lot of that. But there is actually um, documentation on the web. It's like the OOXML format. Maybe it was .doc. .doc is closed. And so I don't produce .doc. Is Yeah. <laughs> 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 